I've played a lot of sports in my life, but one of the sports that I've played the longest and I really enjoy is racquetball. And uh, I started playing probably when I was 12 or 13 years old. My dad taught us boys how to play, and we had a membership at a little local uh, racquetball club. Uh, was I was in the racquetball club when I was in high school, uh, played some when I was in college, when I was teaching, I used to play with some of the students. And I uh, started really playing regularly about 15 years ago. I uh, connected with a couple guys at our local YMCA, uh, two guys named Joel and Rich. And uh, great guys. And uh, we play, uh, you know, uh, whenever we can, we play cutthroat, which is uh, three guys playing at once. It's like one serving against the other two, and then you rotate. And uh, these guys are awesome, awesome guys. Uh, Rich is a retired uh, lieutenant colonel from the Army. And uh, Joel is actually a, a pastor. What, what makes it fun, not only are these good guys, and I've become really good friends with them, some of my best friends, uh, but our skill level is right about the same, right? Which makes it competitive, and, uh, and that's what makes it fun. Although we all have different styles, right? Uh, the colonel has probably got the best swing, and he's the most strategic. Um, he gets a little lazy sometimes with his footwork and mechanics and hits bad shots, which is surprising coming from... Uh, uh, you know, an army colonel. Uh, but, uh, but he's probably, uh, you know, the, the best skilled player that, uh, of the three of us. Joel is just fast. He's like a little greyhound dog, like just running around, like he can get to almost any ball. Just when you think the point's over, eh, Joel runs up there and gets it. You're like, Joel! Um, uh, his Achilles heel, though, is that he's too nice. Pastor Joel is too nice. He doesn't have that killer instinct. He'd rather just keep a play going because it's fun. <laughs> and uh, then you got me. I'm not the most skilled. I'm certainly not the fastest. Uh, I'm the sneakiest, though. I'm the most likely to hit some tricky Z shot that spins off the wall or takes what looks like a strange bounce. Uh, they call it a Jeff bounce. Uh, in fact, they call it uh, Jeff's world because sometimes when I'm in there, just uh, lucky things. I get all the lucky shots. So we've been playing for about 15 years. Uh, it's great exercise, it's good fellowship, we really like it. Uh, but every once in a while, someone else will show up who kind of wants to play. And um, you know, basically the three of us are the three best players at the YMCA. Uh, in fact, they had a, a racquetball tournament one time that I joined and I just went undefeated the whole time, uh, didn't lose a single game. It was either players that were like elderly, uh, playing with old wooden rackets or uh, people that have never played before and they thought this might be a good way to learn. And it's not very fun for anybody when there's a big gap in skills. And so, um, and it, you know, Rich and Joel laughed at me. They're not joining the racquetball league because those guys aren't as good as we are. And so we're, we're pretty good. In fact, people ask me, how good are you at racquetball, Jeff? You know, I play racquetball or you think you can beat me? And I always ask them, do you play in tournaments? Because if you're good enough that you play in tournaments, you're better than me. I'm like one step below the people who play in tournaments. And so I'm a pretty good recreational player. And so people are like, well, no, I don't play in tournaments. Well, then I'm going to beat you. And that's usually what happens. Uh, but if you play in, there's thousands and thousands of people that are better at me than racquetball. And they're playing in tournaments every weekend. So uh, one day, uh, this guy comes walking down the hallway, kind of a heavy set guy. And he's got his gym bag and like, hey, guys, you looking for a fourth? Well, you know, there's doubles racquetball is a thing where you play two on two. It's pretty common. And, uh, but we all, all three of us are like, uh, like it's rude to say no, go away. We don't have room for it because we do have room for it. Um, but what if he's no good? We're looking at him. He doesn't look like he's very good. I don't like to judge a book by a cover, but it doesn't look like he's very good at racquetball. And, uh, and I said, you know, no offense, are, are you any good? And he said, well, I, I used to play a lot, and uh, but I haven't played in years. <sighs> so we're all looking at each other. Nobody wants to be that jerk that doesn't let him play. So we're like, all right, come on. And now we're angling like nobody wants to be stuck with this guy as their partner. His name's Kevin. Hey, Kevin, nice to meet you. Come, we've never even seen this guy before. Uh, well, maybe you can see where this story's going. Uh, Kevin gets out there that nobody wants to be his partner and proceeds to destroy us. Just boom, he's crushing these shots that are rolling out. Let me give you an example of some of his shots. This is not was not filmed that day. This was recreated to give you an example. Uh, this is Kevin uh, hitting some of his shots.
And so he's really, really good. I mean, if, if you were to rank us, right, on a scale of zero to 100, if Kevin is 100, the three of us are maybe a two, maybe a three. He's that much better than we are, staggeringly better than we are. And so we come out of the court and I'm like, all right, cut the crap. What's your story? He's like, well, after I went to college on a racquetball scholarship, I'm <laughs> stop. But this guy used to play at a very, very high level. Uh, at one point, him and his doubles partner won the USA Racquetball Doubles Championship. He's the national champion in racquetball. Uh, I've seen magazines that, uh, that he's on the cover, racquetball magazines that he's on the cover of. And, uh, and so we're laughing at ourselves like, how arrogant. We're like, oh, you're any good? And so uh, anyway, here's what's really interesting. Here's the moral of the story. Uh, this guy started playing with us, right? He wanted to get the exercise. He was enjoying getting to know us. We actually become really good friends with him. Uh, I think he's been playing with us for about five years. And, uh, and here's the really interesting thing, that the other three of us have gotten a lot better. I think Kevin's probably gotten worse playing with us. But we've all gotten better because we'll see him hit a shot. And I'm like, I never even thought about doing that. My whole, oh, he's hitting the sidewall first. He gets a little spin up. Uh, all why you know he's hitting less kill shots and more pass shots uh. and so as we played with him and watched him we've gotten significantly noticeably better he's still at 100 right if, he, if he's at 100 though now instead of us being at two we're maybe like 20 right he's still a lot better than we are but we got 10 times better and it's been one of my experiences in life that you play up to or down to the level of the people that you play with. I think it's true financially, right? People have said that, you know, t five years from now, 10 years from now, your income is gonna be about the same as the five people you spend the most time with. If you hang around with people that are big thinkers and people that get things that you're gonna learn to be a big thinker and learn how to get things done. Uh, if you hang around people that uh, serve others and are humble, you are going to over time have a desire to wanna to serve others and be more humble. If you hang around with jerks that are always tearing other people down, you are going to fall into that pattern of being a jerk and tearing people down. All right, you guys have all heard you become like who you associate with. If you have teenage kids, you know that's true, right? We're very cautious about who our kids hang around because it's true. And so that's my challenge to you, right? My racquetball game is not going to have really any measurable uh, difference on my happiness and success in life, but it's true in other areas of my life. I try to hang around people that are spiritually mature because I want to be like that. I try to hang around people that have solid marriages because I want to have a more and more solid marriage. And so choose who you play with, who you hang with very carefully, because it's going to have an impact on the rest of your life.